Hey, Matt, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Um, I'm curious, Scott made a, a reference yesterday to sort of working to, to pare down the number of receivers you had involved or sort of concentrating the reps a little bit more. Uh, what, what went into that and what have you thought about the growth from your position group maybe over the last couple of weeks? Yeah, I've been happy I, as far as guys striving to get better every day and focusing on daily improvement. And the last two games have been two of our better games, especially in the run game and blocking. I know guys keep track of stats and the fans see guys catching balls, but uh, we were on the right hats and guys were, were moving some guys in some crucial bubbles, uh, which is a big part of our offense. So that was good to see. Uh, you know, we're repping. I think we played five or six guys Saturday. Um, and we, but we feel like we got seven, seven to eight guys that can play for us. And we feel good about that. And we feel if we get nicked up, the next guy, because he has taken reps in practice, is ready to roll. And I, I like our depth situation. Can you, can you maybe just explain a little bit about what that, the horizontal or the quick game passing wise can do for you and, and sort of spatially how it might open up or, or facilitate other things? Yeah, I mean, the, the quick pa passing game, we kind of look at it as a run game. Uh, it helps offensive line as far as getting the ball out quick. They don't have to protect as long. It uh, attacks the defense by making them uh, protect the whole field. We like to attack the whole field, and it just makes it makes it opens up our run game. And so, you know, the biggest thing you know, is, is getting the ball out quick to help our line, uh, making easy possession throws that helps Adrian's con confidence. Um, and then we think we got guys that once they catch the ball in, in space, when the ball's on them fast, can make plays with it. Hey, Sam McEwen. Hey, Matt, to that end, how much joy did you take in that touchdown pass from Martinez to Lieber? Because you, you flipped the formation about 10 seconds before the snap, and then you got the two blocks you needed, and the guy goes in untouched. How much pleasure did you take in that play, and, and how did it kind of come to be? Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, yeah, probably my favorite play of the year, you know, as, as a receipt, because two receivers were blocking for him, and, you know, we, we talk about blocking a lot in the receiver room. It's, I mean, guys don't come here to, to block. I mean, they come here to, to catch balls naturally as, re, as receivers. They want to make plays, and that's it's kind of nature of the position. But once they get here, they learn pretty fast that if you don't block, you don't play. And we talked about this in the room a lot, is nothing says more about who you are as a person by the way you block for your teammates. And so we take a lot of pride in it. We drill it every day, and to see it actually be point of attack and get us a touchdown was huge. Uh, that play specifically, you know, we, we actually planned that to go from one formation to another, and, and that goes back to, to playing fast uh, to give us an advantage to see if guys can line up, and they weren't quite lined up, which which helped, which helped uh, get up its angles on our blocks, and and it was awesome to see Wyatt get his first college touchdown. Hey, the other thing I was awesome about that, I don't know if you saw the on the TV broadcast, is the guy that got the most excited out of everybody was Wandell. He wasn't even in on that play. But uh, he broke his vertical jump record on the sideline, almost, almost got us a penalty right on the field because he was so happy to see those guys, see Wyatt score and see the way it happened. Thank you. Hey. Sean Callahan. Hey, Coach. Uh, I was curious, on game days, how does the dynamic work with you and Coach Frost? Are you making the play call, or how does that work as far as what your role is with him? Um, a lot of people have asked that, and I'm just curious. You're making John, the play calls right now, or who's making the calls? I, I'm sorry, I, lo I lost the whole question there. I, John, can you repeat? Yeah, um, so I'm curious. What is the dynamic, Coach, on game day with you and Coach Ross as far as when it comes to play calling? A lot of people have asked that. Are, are you making the calls right now um, for Frost, and he kind of chimes in? Or yeah, what is it, the it's, a, it's a combination of us both. Uh, we. We talk between each series, and I, I, I stress this a lot. Um, I'm a big believer the game is called before the game. And, and as an offensive staff, we put together a game plan of, hey, this in this situation, we're going to do this. In this situation, we're going to do this. These are our best first and 10 calls. These are our best third down calls. And then it just becomes a matter of reacting. Um, but as long as you're organized and everyone's on the same page, it's pretty much called before the game even starts. It's just a matter of practicing it over and over for different scenarios. And, and, and I think, you know, we do a decent job of that. Uh, the fact that Scott and I have been together for a long time, I think we think a lot alike. Um, I think there's a, definitely a mutual trust level there. Um, but we speak between each series and kind of get the next series called before the series. Okay, uh, Kevin Suits. 
Matt, Adrian's been really good over the past two games, and I think a lot of folks nationally are now starting to learn about his situation, and he doesn't hide behind the fact that he was demoted. And uh, for him to see this success right now over the past two weeks, what have you seen out of him in practice, in his performance, not just the way he's handled the whole situation, uh, but what, from a football standpoint, has he done really, really well that's translated to success on game day? Uh, well, you know, first of all, the way he handled when, when Luke started the Penn State game, and he was Luke's biggest fan, uh, not just in practice, but during the game and, and supportive, and that rubbed off on everybody. And, and uh, you know, that's not natural when, when a starting position gets taken away from you for people to react that way, and it shows a lot about him as a person. And, that, and that's how he is. I mean, those guys are generally best friends. Uh, you know, he, he got a little nicked up in the game. He was fine, but he's like, hey, if, if I can't throw, I need Luke to go in for me. Um, I mean, that's how they feel about each other. And so, obviously, that says a lot about him. You know, his, his leadership, to me, grew, is, he grows each week. You know, after the Iowa game, which was a, a tough loss, you know, we had chances to win on the last drive. He went after the game and had an emotional talk to our football team about what we have to do to win and how close we are, and this isn't good enough. And our team responded, and it was one of the best passionate talks I've ever heard in the locker room. So that's just, you know, a small story of what uh, what he does off the field that people don't see that our, our players are responding to. Derek Pearson. Hey, Matt, it seems like in the, the last couple of weeks, or at least the last two games in particular, the offense is moving with a little bit more efficiency. Um, I, it was, I think Levi Falk was asked about it after the game, and he said that there weren't any adjustments made. It was just more guys are, are executing better. What do, you, what do you attribute that to? Uh, I don't think it's an easy answer. I, I would agree with you. I think we uh, the last two games against you know two good defenses, we, we played better. But um, it, it's, it's a combination of things. It's, it's you know, the, it's in practice, you know, being more attention to detail as players and coaches. It's, uh, you know, limiting our game plan a little bit. Um, uh, being more purposeful on, on our reps and, and the looks we give. And then, um, you know, I, I think because our quarterbacks can run the ball and they've, and they've been throwing the ball accurately, that, that helps us stay balanced. Uh, that helps us stay really balanced. And so it's a combination really of all position groups and coaches working a little bit harder and, and doing the best we can. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just not one specific thing. Brian Christopherson. Hey, Matt, how satisfied were you with that first drive out of the second half? And I bring that up because I think you guys have scored the last three games on that first drive. And last year, that was a that was a struggle for this team. What, what have you seen from guys kind of coming out of the locker room the last few weeks on on that possession in particular? Yeah, that's it's crazy. I thought early on in the year, we were getting criticized for not scoring early on in the second half. So that's it's something that we work on, you know, halftime adjustments. Uh, the, the first thing we go in, you know, we try to be organized. Hey, what's worked? What hasn't worked? What haven't we got to? And we talk about that. Um, and we also talk to our players about, hey, this is what's worked. And, and how, how do we have to make this better and, and try to motivate them? So it's a combination of, you know, coaching adjustments, players resetting, and getting their focused. That, that drive was huge for us for a whole bunch of reasons. Uh, it kind of gave us some momentum back. We controlled the clock. You know, in a game where you don't, when you don't turn the ball over, we talk about not beating ourselves. We're really proud of this. You know, we didn't, didn't turn the ball over. I uh, didn't have a penalty in the fourth quarter. We, should, we had too many in the fourth quarter, but we didn't have one, which is an improvement. Uh, we had our snaps better. So we weren't really beating ourselves. It was just us executing, which we've had issues with this year. But the last two games, we've been better. So I think guys were really focused on that. Um, and that, that's a step in the right direction. You mentioned the drive in the fourth quarter with the penalties. As an offensive coordinator, did you see something, even though it was so chaotic, did you, is there something you liked out of that, that you guys were able to kind of come through it and get some points off of it? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's the play the next play attitude. And we talk about that all the time because it's easy to get discouraged after a, after a penalty, you know, and, and the odds of being successful in that drive are not in your favor. But I think we had two or three, but we were able to overcome those. You know, we actually got one on, on our side, too, a penalty that helped us sustain that drive and, and change field position. So, because that, that's how, I mean, things are going to happen in a game that you don't like. Uh, guys are going to make mistakes. It's, it's how, you know, we talk about, that's mental toughness. How, how do you handle the mistake? Can, can you really flush it and learn, learn from it? Can you play that next play regardless of what happened the previous play at, at all-out effort with all-out focus? And so that, that, to me, was a sign of improvement and a sign of just maturity by our guys being able to, OK, uh, we had a penalty. Let's go next play. And as coaches, you got to do that, too. Uh, you know, you all of a sudden 
you're first and 10, but no, you got a penalty and you're second and 20. Well, you can't panic. <laughs> you, you have a plan for second and 20, and you got to have that call ready to go and, and use that call. Okay, we got time for about two more questions. I'll go Mitch Sherman. Hey, Matt, um, you guys got to see uh, the difference with Diedrich um, back this last game um, and have obviously had to play without him a little bit. What what kind of a lift does he bring you, um, not just physically, but emotionally on the offensive side when he's there? Yeah, uh, fiery personality, and that's the way he is every day in practice. Um, he is a vocal leader, and so he just gives us juice. His energy is contagious, and it makes – you know, gives everyone else energy. And then to see him run as hard as he runs, uh, especially coming back off, off his injury, which is, was not easy for him to do that, it was really impressive. And that's why uh, he helped us win the football game. He's got the respect of all his coaches and teammates. Okay, last question in this group, uh, Andy Kendi. Hey, Coach, um, how challenging has it been to prepare for a team that's been off for a couple weeks? You don't know who's going to play uh, and that type of thing. And what does Minnesota's defense do well? Yeah, well, you know, in this league, every every defense is good, and the and they, them included. Uh, they're well coached. They're very physical. Uh, they're, they're they're good tacklers, and you know, the, the biggest thing for us is that you know they kicked our butt last year and, and got after us, and so it's uh, we, we've got a ton of respect for for their coaches, for their players, and what they do. As far as preparing, um, you know, we treat it like any other game. Uh, we do have some film on them, you know, and, and, and we can't worry about, like, who's playing and who's not playing. And um, it's, it's 2020. It's COVID. It is what it is. We all have our, have our own issues. Um, I know they'll be prepared, and we know we're going to get, you know, a heck of a, a challenge and a heck of a contest, and they're going to be physical, and I'm sure they're excited to come down here, and I know our guys are excited as well.